Welcome once again to the workshop of Wood Spun Round. This is Doug. It is so good to see all of you with us today. Uh, got a little different kind of a video today. I wanted to introduce a new product. It, it's new to me. In fact, it's brand new on the market. Uh, it's Axe Tongue Oil Paste. I believe Tom is going to call it uh, First Step. And I'll explain more about that here in just a few moments. But what I've got on the lathe is uh, a block of oak. Uh, this was some dunnage that uh, I picked up at a salvage uh, reclamation place quite a while back and uh, took, my, took the dunnage pieces and cut them up into uh, turning blanks. And this is just one of those. I've, I've got two that are virtually identical uh, to one another. They may have even come out of the same block. They're, they're that close to being identical. But uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of the turning. I've got it set up uh, here and, and just a little bit, not a whole lot. But I'm not even going to show you all of that. Because the turning is not what's important here. The finish. There are three parts of the finishing process now uh, with axe. There's the abrasive paste and the wax that we've been using for quite a while. But this new tongue oil paste, this what he's going to call the first step, uh, is new and in talking back and forth and uh, not only with Tom but with a couple of other folks who have been using abrasive paste and wax as a finish for a long time I've come to my way of thinking the abrasive paste should go first and then the tunnel of paste and then the wax <coughs> um, that just makes sense to me. If, if I put the tongue oil on first, I'm removing some of it with the abrasive paste. Tom's thought is, if you put the abrasive paste on first, it seals the surface of the wood and the tongue oil cannot sink into the wood like it's expected to. But I think it's negligible. In fact, what I'm going to show you is it's really negligible either way. Um, you're going to see this bowl finished my way with the abrasive paste, then the first step, and then the wax. And then I'm going to turn in a bowl that's almost identical, and we're going to do the first step, then the abrasive paste, and then the wax. And you're going to see, I'm going to show you pretty up close and personal, um, the difference between the two. So what we've done here is, is I've turned the outside of this bowl and I'm turning uh, this, I had a band in here and I decided let's make that two beads instead of just a single band. Uh, it just looks better, it, it's more attractive to me, it serves the same purpose. Um, not only does it break up the side of the bowl, but it also uh, gives your fingers a place to, to hold the bowl. If this was a larger bowl, it'd be a, a good gripping point on the outside. It's a small bowl, so it really doesn't matter that much. Uh, going through my typical sanding process, um, doing 80 grit, 120, 180, 240. And that's all the sanding I do. I stop there, and then typically I would put on sanding sealer. But with this new, uh, this new step, I, I really don't feel like the sanding sealer is needed. Just finishing up my sanding here. There you see the abrasive paste. I'm not putting any sanding sealer on here, just the abrasive paste. Normally, if you forget the abrasive paste, or excuse me, if you forget the sanding sealer, we would suggest doing two coats of the abrasive paste. But uh, in this particular situation, you're gonna have the abrasive paste and the tongue oil paste before your wax. So it's gonna be very well sealed as well as being silky smooth. Uh, the abrasive paste just takes your sanding from the 240 where you really need to have your dust collection on, uh, dust mask if you have one. Um, you need to take care of your lungs. And if you go above 240 with your sanding, that dust, that as it gets finer and finer, it's more and more harmful to your lungs. Um, so what the paste does is take you from the 240 grit all the way up to about a thousand grit thereabouts and uh, it really does a phenomenal job of giving you a silky smooth surface 
uh, in preparation for your finish. Here you see I'm just putting it on, just applying it manually uh, with the lathe off, um, turning it with my left hand. Uh, and then I'm just telling you there, I'm starting at 200 RPMs. Uh, I don't want to sling that off. I've just put the abrasive paste on there. I don't want to sling it off. But I do want to start working it at a fairly slow speed. If your lathe will only go down to 500, um, that's fine. Use 500. Um, just be aware that you may get a little on your face or on your face shield um, when you first turn it on. But work that paste down. Listen to the grit. It'll get finer and finer. You'll feel the grit as well as it gets finer and finer. Um, as it begins to break down, you, you it gets quieter and smoother. You turn your speed up a little bit. In fact, I'll show us, well, I will probably won't show us here um, because I'm going to cut this part shorter as well. But there, I just turned it up, and I'm still using that, that original portion. Yeah, just turned it up to 400 RPMs. Still using the same part of the paper towel that I use to apply. Uh, that way I'm using all of the grit that I put on that bowl, including what was in the paper towel, uh, until it breaks down. I'll go from 400 to 600 to 800, um, and I think I finish up at 900 on this particular bowl. Um, just after you have sped it up a couple of times and you feel that grit is pretty well gone, you begin to use a clean portion of the paper towel at a higher speed. And what you're doing is removing the excess oil and wax that is the carrier for the abrasive. So I've done all that. And here you see I'm putting on the label on mine is second step. Originally, that's what it was going to be. Uh, Tom has changed his mind and he's going to, he's, saying to use it first uh, so he's calling it first step either way uh, Tom and I have talked about it a bit and it really doesn't matter the difference between using the abrasive uh, paste first and using this tongue oil paste first is I can't see the difference there may be some folks out there who have a keener eye than I do who can see the difference I cannot see the difference or feel the difference. If I'm just feeling the two bowls, they feel identical. But all you do is get some of this uh, tongue oil paste. It's, it's still thin. Um, it's not oil type thin. Um, so don't go in there like you do with the wax, really working it, trying to get some on your paper towel. It doesn't take much and you just you cover your, your bowl or pin, whatever you're turning, uh, cover it real well, and then you're gonna let it go. You're gonna let it sit. Um, I would say probably 15 minutes would be minimum. Uh, a couple of hours would be ideal. And then you're gonna come back and just kind of wipe off your excess at first. Um, the excess is not doing you any good. It, it It's already soaked in. If you've waited over about well, if you've waited two hours, uh, all it's gonna, it has soaked in all it's going to soak in. So wipe off that excess. And then I would suggest coming back and, and buffing it, using a, a little bit of pressure, not uh, real heavy-handed, but uh, put a little pressure on it, and that will heat that oil up and help it to set in the wood, but it also um, uh, dries off the surface. Because we can go on right after this. You can either wait uh, if you've got the time and you want to just let it sit and dry. Let it sit for 12 hours or overnight, uh, 24 hours if you want to. Come back and then you can put your wax on it. However, if you take the time to kind of buff that, that surface up real good, uh, like I'm doing here, then you can come back in uh, virtually immediately and put your wax on. Again, Tom has, uh, he, he took his original wax formula, which was a, a fairly soft carnauba wax formula, but he doubled the carnauba wax, doubled how much carnauba flake he was putting into the mixture uh, to melt down, which means that some of the oil had to come out. So uh, you're, you've got a, a very stiff 
carnauba wax in the jar. You really got to work it onto your paper towel, and then you can apply it onto your your piece, whatever it is you're turning. You can see there it has made it uh, kind of wet looking on, on the surface. Um, I'm not putting tons of wax on here, uh, but I am getting enough where I get a good even coat all the way around. And then I'm going to let it sit. I want that wax to sit for a few minutes, um, kind of begin hardening up on the surface of the bowl. Um, with your car polishes and all whatnot, it has solvents in it, so the instructions say let it sit for 30 minutes till the wax haze is over, and then you can buff it off. This has no solvent in it. Um, this carnauba wax has a bit of oil in it, and that's what gets it soft enough for you to be able to spread it like this. And so all you're doing is letting um, some of the mineral oil, it doesn't, well, it, it evaporates is what it does. And so uh, you're gonna put it on there, let that wax set up just a little bit, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. If you, if you get done at the end of the day and you put your wax on, you don't come back to it till the next day, that's fine. Uh, I would suggest using just a little bit more wax on your paper towel to soften that up a little bit, but buff it up softly at first just to take off the excess, and then you apply more and more pressure, building just a little bit of heat, and that makes that, uh, it helps that carnauba to set. We're on the second bowl here. I've already turned it, already finished the outside. Um, I'm gonna show you doing the inside, but I'm gonna do it in, in Tom's uh, uh, recommended way, using the first step first and then the abrasive paste and then the wax. I've already done this on the outside. First bowl was done with the abrasive paste first, then the tongue oil paste, and then the wax. This one I'm gonna do the tongue oil paste and then the abrasive and then the wax and at last so that you can see them side by side. So I've cleaned it, uh, I, you know, I've turned it, I've sanded it, I've cleaned it. We're putting the tongue oil paste in first and then I'm gonna walk away. Uh, I meant for it to sit for about 15 or 20 minutes and it took me about 45 minutes to an hour before I got to come back. And it really didn't matter. There was a little bit of excess on the surface. I came in and kind of buffed it out of there and then went on with the process. Here we are buffing it off, cleaning it before we do the abrasive paste. And there's just not a lot there, honestly. Um, a lot of it soaked straight into the wood told you this was dunnage. Uh, these oak pieces, they were uh, uh, 18 to 20 inches long um, and about uh, uh, five inches, uh, five by three maybe, two and a half thereabouts. I didn't show you very well. This is the abrasive paste going on. Same process, just use my paper towel, get some on the paper towel and spread it around, uh, making sure I've got enough to cover the entire surface. I have seen people who use just tons and tons of abrasive paste. That's fine, uh, you know, it just takes longer to get it off is all. Uh, you're not gonna get any better results. You, now, you don't wanna skimp on it either. Uh, put enough on there to cover your surface and then start your lathe up at between 200 and 500. Work that abrasive paste, let it begin to break down. If you go like two minutes um, at the slowest speed and just, you know, you should be okay. And then you can speed up, do that a couple of times. Then you start speeding up even more and using a, a clean part of your paper towel to remove all that excess after the abrasive has broken down. I had gone over the edge and I decided to go ahead and just do the that whole section above the bead, and which I did, and it didn't make any difference whatsoever. Going to the wax here. 
the abrasive paste will leave you with a shine, um, but it's it's a shine like you sanded to 1,000 or, or higher, and it just won't last. And so you need something on top of that. This Carnuba wax, you can see I'm working it pretty good. It is pretty stiff in the jar. So I'm going to get a good coating again. I'm not going to overdo it, but I'm not going to underdo it either. I'd rather get some excess off than not have it fully covered. I'm just going to work that wax, uh, any cracks, crevices, into the grain. Uh, here I'm buffing it out. I've let it set for a while. Uh, in fact, I went I went and met my wife for, for dinner when she got off work and uh, came back. And that's why I, I don't have my smock on, but this, uh, this quilted shirt. So I'm just buffing off the wax. You can see there in the bottom, I've got a pretty nice little shine. There's the two bowls side by side. I wanna have some pictures here for you um, so you can see them up close and personal. If you'd like to try some Axe products, uh, the, the website is axewoodpaste.com. No punctuation in there at all, no, no uh, uh, capital letters, no spaces, just axewoodpaste.com. And you can, you'll find a phone number there as well. You can call or you can order online. Use Doug15 at the checkout and uh, you'll get a 15% discount. Until we get to meet again, I hope you're able to spin them around.